Yeah, I had done too many movies about young kids doing drugs, dancing, having sex, and I got bored of them. <laughs> My name is Gaspar Noe. I make movies from time to time, and the last one is called Vortex. La, la vie est un rêve, non? Oui. La vie est un rêve dans un rêve. It's about an, an old couple in trouble. It's like a very simple movie. But what makes it a bit weird is that it, it has two screens inside the screen. It's a split screen movie from the beginning to the end. You can follow what she's doing on one side of the image while he's doing something else on the other side of the image. So yeah, it's like a, a double story of two, two lonely persons living under the same roof. The split screen is, uh, in the case of this story, it's very simple and easy to understand. It's just because uh, from the moment on that she starts losing her mind because she has Alzheimer, uh, she gets disconnected from her husband, and the husband gets disconnected from her. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, they're sharing the same space. They wake up in the same bed, but each one of them is inside uh, his or her own bubble. It can also happen in a smaller scale if you are with your girlfriend or your boyfriend, and he's been smoking marijuana, and he starts making jokes that make him laugh or make her laugh, and you don't laugh at all or if you're with someone who's uh, uh, drunk, uh, sometimes you're disconnected, but yeah, dementia, like the, um, uh, the senility is very hardcore, so it's very hard to communicate with someone who lost his mind. There was a very famous movie called uh, The Boston Strangler with Tony Curtis, uh, shot in the late 60s or beginning of the 70s, uh, using a, a multiple screen. But uh, it's just one feature film that I had seen using it from the beginning to the end in, in a simple way. It was a movie by Paul Morrissey called uh, 42nd Street or 40 Deutsche, but uh, no one knows that movie. I think I had done too many movies about young kids doing drugs, dancing, having sex, and I got bored of them. I've been in situations in my life that were similar to, to what happens in climax with people who were losing their mind on drugs or things like that. But uh, the most hardcore kind of dementia or craziness that I have seen was when, when my mother uh, had uh, Alzheimer. I could tell that she was in a permanent state of terror. You know, not fear, but terror. When you do drugs, it lasts for one hour, two hours, six hours, one day maximum, but then you're over. Uh, in the case of uh, dem dementia, uh, it gets worse and worse every morning. It's sadder for sure and, uh, and also it's far more universal because situations like this one happen almost in every single family, in every country, in every social level. So uh, yeah, that, that's what's what. That's why many people are touched by this movie. On the other hand, I understand that people are scared of this movie because the main fear that people have in life is not uh, rape, it's not a war, it's not hunger, it's not the atomic bomb or the global warming. The, what people fear the most uh, in life is uh, dementia, it's Alzheimer. I like growing up. Well, this was few years ago I had a a brain hemorrhage, uh, almost died of it, or I, I could have been um, uh, a bit disabled verbally or mentally, but uh, I was very, very lucky and uh, I came back without any damage, so uh, I feel like the, the party keeps on going, but uh, I'm playing it a bit safer since. I think you, st you stop growing up when you... Uh, when you don't understand anymore what those words mean. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's like when you fall asleep, sometimes you, you, you're watching a movie and then you wake up the next morning and you didn't see the point in which you were you fell asleep. I think with the old age it's a bit the same. You're enjoying your old age and suddenly you don't record anything anymore. That's a good thing about being a writer, a filmmaker or uh, 
or someone who who transmit his knowledge to other people through books, teaching, etc. Is that you you communicate your own experience. Some of my memories would survive to the moment of my death, but if uh, if I'm less lucky, the, the, all the DVDs would be burnt <laughs> under an atomic fire. Because he was the most charismatic person I could have thought of filming for this project. He never thought anybody would propose him to act in a movie. He said, hey, Dario, you want to be in my movie? I'm not going to write you any dialogue. I know you're, you're, you're not an actor, you're a director, so you don't have any memory, you're like me, but uh, you'll be able to improvise. I'll be taking care of one of the two cameras and of the editing. Let's make this movie together. I'm extremely happy that he accepted because I had no other good idea to play that part. But mostly he didn't like shooting the same scene more than twice or three times. But in my previous movies I could shoot sometimes six times the scenes or 12 times or 14 times. But uh, when you work with Dario in front of the camera it was just uh, <laughs> two, three times maximum. <laughs> yeah, by his joy, by his films, by his uh, use of colors and also by his uh, permanent good mood, that he's very joyful, funny, and uh, yeah, positive. I was trying to find uh, uh, the, the very best images that would portray the language of dreams. I saw of a movie by Pabst called uh, The Mysteries of a Soul, but uh, the, the excerpt didn't work that well. Then there was a, another short film by Maya Deren that was good but it was not as graphic as the one that we finally used from Dreyer. That is like the point of view of someone who's dead from the grave. And so well, that, that, that really feels like the images of, that you could dream of at night to describe uh, how you could transfer the language of dreams to cinema. Almost three years ago, I had a brain hemorrhage. I spent some time in the, in the hospital. And when I came out from there, the, the, the coronavirus appeared on this planet and they told me, oh, you better stay at home. So I spent a few months watching all Japanese classics uh, on Blu-ray or on DVD. And there is one movie also about old age that I didn't know that I loved and I watched it many times in a row. It's the original uh, version of the Ballad of Narayama by Kinoshita, no, not the remake the, the, by Imamura, the God of Pomodori in the, in the 80s, the original movie from 1958. That movie is so sad, so cruel, so beautiful. I, I like to do documentary. Uh, that's one, you no know, people put crosses, like I've done this, I've done this, I tried, I've been to Thailand, I've been to Korea, I've been to... But yeah, uh, one day I'd like to do uh, like a... Uh, a strong and long documentary about something. The good thing about doing documentaries is that you don't have the conclusion. You have the idea, but then you, 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 do, you start it as a research. You feel more like a detective. You, 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 you don't feel like a priest who's going to find a way to convince people of what they have to do or how they have to, to receive something. Yeah, that's a, it's a more open way of approaching cinema documentaries. J'ai le pied dans la tombe, déjà je ne suis 